artist when you when you see Mary's beautiful exhibition. My name is Emer and I'm the director of Drift uh, and I do want to welcome you all here this evening. I am really personally chuffed that Mary's back here with us and, and has chosen Drift to exhibit her new work. And um, she uh, I think last time was nine years, nearly nine years ago to the month actually. Um, and I remember that exhibition really well. Uh, so I was delighted when we could work together again. Um, and I just want to say well done. When I, when I saw the work in her studio uh, a little while ago, I was completely bowled over, which I think she realised. And I kept going, it's fantastic. Um, but I'm very pleased to introduce uh, Patrick Dealey, who's going to uh, open the exhibition. Uh, and I think he wants to say a few words. Good evening, everybody. I hope you can all hear me, and I hope I'm not shouting at the same time. <laughs> I'm delighted uh, to be asked to open this exhibition of new paintings by Mary Burke, uh, Memory Traces, here in the wonderful space that is Drake. And uh, I'm told that Drake is 12 years old. It still looks new, but not yeah. too new. It has that youth thing as well. And what I love about it here tonight is the sense coming up earlier of seeing in here from the outside and in a sense going in here and coming in here to find that we're already out there again while we're in here because Mary's work so complements the place it's set in. And the tent patterns outside seem to find a wonderful echo on the beautiful paintings here. Now I should tell you that um, I am well known and those who know me, I am well known as a person who often gets lost. And I especially uh, am very much prone to getting lost in familiar places such as uh, the housing estates and the streetscapes that Mary's work, where Mary's work finds its inspiration and makes its home. So, Mary, you're, uh, without maybe being aware of it, you're maybe a little bit brave in inviting me <laughs> and in, to open your exhibition tonight. But we're here and I'm delighted to be here, Mary. Um, they say that a, 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 you know, a painting or a picture can paint a thousand words. And I don't know if that's true or not, but I know for certain that a thousand words do not capture an exhibition such as this. Uh, but nonetheless, not, that's not to say that I haven't written some things down, I have done, not a thousand words, but some ideas. I have been considering these um, paintings, first of all in Mary's studio itself, and then uh, in the wonderful catalogue that's done, and of course here face to face, in situ, in Driet. And you know, they get more magnificent uh, the further on we go with them, and they're totally enchanting to me. So I want to uh, tell you some of my uh, kind of ideas around them. And, um, of course, looking at them, as you all have done, the first thing we notice is that on, on an immediate level, uh, Mary Burke's paintings are a pleasure to look at. They're an absolute pleasure to stand before and to take in and to actually go into and to find yourself being absorbed into those colours. Uh, so that's the first thing I would say about them. Now, the scenes that they portray are immediately recognisable to us all, um, not least, of course, through the colour. Uh, they entice us and they draw us right in. Uh, and as well as that, they are beautiful, but they are technically excellent. Um, I don't know whether it's the poet in me, or maybe the carpenter, the lost carpenter, because I come from that background, but something about the draftsmanship draws my eye. And I am totally struck by the architraves I find, and the banisters, uh, the lintels and the thresholds, the windowsills and the parquet floors. And, of course, beyond and above all that, the great craft with which these are intersected, superimposed, and they're subsumed and reflected. And uh, I was talking to somebody earlier, and her idea seems to strike a bell with me, that you have doorways, you have windows, you have spaces into other possibilities. And the paintings very much deliver that to us. And thereafter, it's a matter of our own imaginations. Um, there is a lot happening in these works, or maybe it might be fair to say there is a lot being intimated by them. Uh, we gather this by the way that the artist has fragmented some of the elements, or the elements, and the way she has compressed space, and the sense of limitations and boundaries around the paintings, and in the move from the representational towards the abstract. So while the paintings are inherently pleasing and assured, uh, they also they are not without their argument, and argument is great, and they have that real argument as well as managing these other aesthetic things. Uh, they certainly could be thought of as representations of a place that, no matter how bleakly charted it is, it's the artist's own place. And for many of us, that
that place bears a striking resemblance to our place, the chimneys and the gables and the halls and the landings, the staircases and the tented panes of glass. All of these give us an inkling, uh, even down to the way the, the paintings go down to the lanes and avenues, we can agree that these are maybe the very same lanes and avenues we walk along and that we drive through on an everyday basis. Behind these affirmations, however, I think that the paintings bring other, maybe more disconcerting subjects to mind. And I'll talk th about those in a moment. Um, Mary uses selective collages. She sets up memory props and provocations. She works through a sensibility that I feel is maybe predominantly architectural. One argument in the paintings, I think, may have to do with the constraints which are suggested by the inflexibility of the built environment. We are all beings of flesh and blood, but we have to operate within the solid, physical, built environment. And sometimes being people who love rambles and curves and spirals and all the things our minds suggest to us, all the things of nature, we are nonetheless constrained by these sharp edges and by these spaces where we have to live. And there are rules and regulations for living implied in the way the artist organizes space and in the degrees of sameness and the functionality attaching to things, and we might infer uh, the functionality attaching to people as well. And when I dwell on these paintings, they start me thinking in prepositions, which for a left-handed man is very important, the prepositions as where this is and what that is and how up and down things are. So I'm thinking about the in and the over and the around of things in terms of these paintings, and the heads up and the low down, and the ways we must anger and edge ourselves to accommodate and even to negotiate with the places where we live. These places are, for the vast majority of people, suburban. And I'm not at all sure if community was ever or could ever be described as a circle or as circular, but there was that sense about community as being a circle or circular. But if so, these paintings are asserting that it must operate now within the elaborate and highly planned and the plotted box and grid conurbations that are our modern day places of residence. The house, which we all have our own idea of the house, our house, and Irish people in particular are fond of their house, and they're looking to have one these days and ages. <laughs> but the house has its associations of shelter, status, lifestyle, and it has the notion of itself as uh, standing for the future, and as a place to which we return after everything else has been said and done. But it's also a repository of memories. And we respond in these paintings, I think, to the disjoints and the disrupts which the paintings present to us. And to what I would describe as their dispassionate passion. They're dispassionately passionate. It sounds like a, a contradiction, but I hope it's a paradox. And um, I think we respond with memories of our own. And there's a painting over there on the far side, for instance, called, Ban uh, called Descend. And the banisters in that set me thinking, uh, about my own uh, memories, for, for one example, and when I was a small boy, sliding down those banisters in my parents' house in County Galway, and when I was a bit, a good bit older, sneaking up those banisters, gripping them in the darkness in the sacred back line behind me, and my parents long since in bed, and me supposed to be long since in bed. And that is my memory, one memory, or bits of memories, coming from the banisters. So, I would say that Paintings involve us and engage us with our own fragments of memory, or we engage the paintings with our fragments of memory, with shards of our familiar places. And the places are called home for us, but they leave us memory traces, which is what this exhibition is called, of course. I think two of the main arenas with which these paintings are concerned are the public and the private. And these two interact and they feed off each other and they spark off each other. And it's fascinating the sense of going from one place to another, one dimension to another, as I said, coming from the street in here, coming to the wall, examining the paintings, and in a sense going back out because the mind can travel anywhere in an instant. And the body is always chasing after the mind and the mind squints. Uh, the paintings, which are entitled Flashback, Equilibrium, Recall, and Above, they take us outside and they take us in, and they offer a dual viewpoint. We recognize the experience of the outside as being different. Nature is here in the prevailing pebble dash and in the brickwork, of course, but also in the furled boulders I saw over there. And these seem to be gathering moss beside a hedge. 
and nature is there in the creeping plant, or maybe the shadow of a plant, the, the shadow of a plant, I'm told, colonizing the wall. And there's a favorite motif of Mary Burke's, which is sunlight through a garden window, which has its own play in our minds, in my mind, associations with things to do possibly with freedom, happiness, or maybe the opposite, who knows? Because you may well be inside and held within. Um, there's the allotted sky space in lots of these paintings. And there's the domestic shrub, and there's the verge of grass. So the suburbs sometimes strikes a wonderful balance between nature and the built environment. And the paintings acknowledge nature in the, their suburban uh, look. The night is glimpsed through a window, and the night glimpsed through a window gives a heightened sense of the anonymity and the privacy and the silence of the interior. And these images, these night images of the paintings I referred to, they are pervaded with an after hours feel, a night feel, the sensation of moving into a new element. And it's as if night is switched on, hidden amplifiers. You know that late time at night when you're up and the TV is off and everyone else has gone to bed? There's that whisper behind your ears which you think of as almost like an amplification of things. And you have that heightened sense of awareness. And I think these paintings very much capture that. And I think, Mary, you must be a person works at night because I as a person work at night try to catch that sense as well, that atmosphere. Um, so we become sharply aware of how we are in our bodies. And our bodies of course are another interior as well as being an exterior. We're always concerned about our bodies as the exterior for other people, but in fact they really are the interior and there are our own secret uh, units within this world. So within that we have this sharp awareness of how we feel in this space that we occupy and we experience the shivers of the nighttime and the play of shadow and light. And we can imagine the sound maybe of a dog barking or of a car driving past or maybe a door down the road opening or closing. And such familiar sense impressions, they evoke something tremendously uncanny in these vivid atmospheric works. And I think Mary is to be complimented uh, and congratulated for the fact for her perseverance. I can only imagine the painstaking care that went into making these beautiful works, Mary, for people to enjoy and to take something from and to remember, and hopefully for some people who are able to purchase as well. And um, but whether or which they certainly been with just looking at them. And I want to congratulate you on that, the craft and the beauty of the paintings, the passionate character they show, and the resonance and the relevance they hold for all of us. And I wish you every success with memory traces. Mm -hmm. Thank you all very much for coming and thank you Mary.